Hey YouTube, Shuku and Shobi here with a review of the SH Figures Kamen Rider Hibiki. Now for those of you that know me well, Hibiki is my favorite rider series and by extension technically my favorite rider. I love his design, it's amazing. And to have it in a Figures form finally was phenomenal. I just had the biggest grin on my face when I found out that he was getting released. He was released in August 2014 for about 5,000 yen. And yes, that is pricey, but this is one of the Shinko Choseho releases of SH Figure Arts. Um, and I'm not going to try to say that again. <laughs> but those are the high-grade Figure Arts. Kabuto was the last one released. Hibiki is the second. The third is currently, as of this recording, unknown. They haven't announced a new one yet. Um, but this is one of the higher grade, uh, figure arts, if you want to call it like that. There's not a whole lot of difference between one of these and a normal figure art, but I guess it's enough to warrant the price. They come packed in this pretty cool little iPhone looking box with the rider on the side there in metallic lettering and the SH figure arts logo right there. We have the cool picture of the rider on front and the typical nonsense on the back. So go ahead and uh, slide this open, which is a little bit more of a hassle than it's worth. And you're greeted with the figure. And obviously the figure's out of this tray. So we'll pop this tray out. And then you have the accessories tray down here at the bottom. So you see that Hibiki includes eight additional hands, two uh, Ongeki Boraka, the uh, holstered versions was in here, the Onkaku, a holstered one was right here. The disc animals were right there. Those are now on his belt. Uh, colored versions of the disc animals. You get the hawk, the wolf, and the gorilla. And then two fire effects for the Ongeki Bureka. So that is kind of neat. And then you also have the instructions in case you don't know how to use an action figure. And a cool little concept book. I wouldn't really call it a concept book, but... You have some cool little design pictures in here of the figure and telling you how they designed it. Mass Rider Hibiki. This one shows the skeleton prototype that they used to develop these Shinko Joseho versions. And that's where most of the cost comes from, is that they, they put a lot of time and effort into the skeletal structure of these figures. So it, it costs a little more. The paint's usually a little bit higher than a normal figure art. And um, <laughs> they take a little bit more time to hide the joints of one of these. So it, it's all right. It's a neat little booklet that I can't seem to get to the last page. This one's probably just saying, thank you for buying our toy. And the Cinco Choseho little logo right back there. So we'll move that out of the way and put our focus on the man himself. So I own plenty of Hibiki figures throughout my collection, and this is by far the best one. And this one even possibly rivals the Project BM, uh, which are supposed to be like the best of the best because they're the 112 scale figures. But I have to say that this one could top it. I don't own that one, but I've heard mixed reports about it, and this is just a phenomenal figure. Um, that word, words can't even describe how great this figure is. And, and of course, I will have bias. I will definitely have bias throughout this review. Uh, because Hibiki is my favorite. But there's, there's not a whole lot to nitpick with. Um, I'll, I'll get to a couple, uh, instances, uh, later on. But, uh, for now, we'll take a look at the base, uh, figure. You've got articulation in all the typical figure arts places. You've got ball joint up there at the neck that I just kind of messed up. Full rotation at the, uh... Shoulders there, I almost call them elbows. The shoulder pads are on a joint right here, so you can move them downward to get full articulation that way. Elbows, as usual, are double jointed. Old style figure arts elbow joint right there. It is not the ones that were on Kabuto that look more like Figma joints. Ab crunch right there, which is... Oop, he can pop off, apparently. That's cool. Uh, ab crunch isn't as good as it could be. It is very minimal actually, so don't really try to get a whole lot of the ab crunch going on, because it's not going to go too far. We'll take a good look at the belt while we have him split apart in two. Uh, the belt is right there. The drum comes in and off. 
just like uh, that. So you can have him holding that, or you could tape it to a different figure and pretend he's about to initiate the final attack. You've got the logo very nicely detailed underneath that, which I think is kind of neat that they even took the time to do that. Disc animals right here are hanging from the belt. The figure comes packed with a little blank version of it right there that you can barely even see. The Ungeki Boraka holder is right back here with them hanging out there. Again, the figure comes packed with a blank one, so if you have him holding the Ungeki Boraka, he is still accurate. The Onkaku is just hanging out right down here, literally, because it is hanging <laughs> right there. And of course, as we know by now, it comes with a normal un onkaku version to put on the belt there when he is holding it. So pretty cool. They've got all their bases covered with the belt here. Very nice looking. And then a little loincloth. Not loincloth. That's not the word I'm looking for. I don't know. I'm just going to move on. <laughs> uh, right down here you do have a very minimal swivel. Actually, no, it's a full swivel. Mine was just stuck. Right here at the thigh, you do get a very interesting hip joint system that you don't see too often in figure arts. I'm not sure if the Kabuto one has this because I didn't own that one. But um, you got a pretty much a full swivel system in here. And like I said, no matter what you're doing, it's hiding the joint fairly well. So you're not going to have like a an opening here like you do in some figure arts. You can see like inside the figure. You're not going to have that with this guy. And uh, that is really cool. I've heard a lot of people complain about possible breakage. I don't know. I've been posing mine a lot since I got him, and I haven't had any problems, so your mileage may vary. Double joint on the knee right there, and the typical figure arts ankle joint right down there with the toe joint right there. So that about covers the articulation, and uh, moving along to the detail, even though we already looked at the belt, everything about this guy is just very well done. Uh, the only minor gripe I have is something that I don't know if they would have been able, even able to pull off. The uh, I forgot what it was called. It's like Mizora or something like that. The paint used on Hibiki's show suit has a reflective quality that kind of changes the color of the suit a little bit in certain light conditions. Um, but obviously, this figure is just a metallic purple. And that's not a deal breaker for me at all. I love it. Uh, most TBK figures are just the metallic purple color. I think uh, SIC and maybe the Project BM were the only ones I think to have that sort of quality to them. Uh, but I, I don't mind it. And the, the gloss on the purple is great. And it is as accurate as they can be without actually using that paint, I believe. Because the gloss on this purple is just really, really gorgeous. It's, it's deep. It's rich. And uh, it, it pulls off the look of Hibiki very, very well. I love the gradient here from the purple into the red. Looks very nicely done right there. It's a nice, subtle gradient shift. And uh, even the hands have a nice black wash to them. So that is cool as well. And then the purple continues right down here into the ankles, which have a cool little effect on them, as do the wrists. So just a great figure. Head sculpt. No problems whatsoever there. It is entirely accurate, and I've got no gripes at all. Sometimes figure arts can come out and look really weird in the proportions, but Hibiki fortunately does not. He looks absolutely great in terms of proportions, so I have no, no problems there. Now the hands included with him are pose hands. He's kind of doing his yo pose with his fingers there. You got those. You got additional... Uh, relaxed hands. Then you have hands for holding the Ongeki Boreka. And then you have hands for holding the Onkaku and for holding disc animals. Moving along to the other accessories, the Ongeki Boreka are very nice. It's all solid until you get up here onto the Oni face that my camera probably will never in a million years be able to focus on properly. Um, but they are two different uh, Oni faces, just like in the show. So that is cool. I am mixed up and don't know which one belongs to which one. But um, they are very, very cool. You also got the Onkaku right there. It's about as best as I'm going to get. 
So he can hold that pretty well. It does have the little notch to put disc animals on, but I don't think they can connect. No, that's way too small of a little hole there. Uh, so speaking of, you do get the disc animals here. You get the wolf, the gorilla, and the hawk. Those are very nicely detailed from the front here, and even so from the back. So those are pretty neat as well. Uh, a gripe I have about the figure with, in terms of the accessories is that um, the Onkaku is limited. You have the one that is holstered onto the belt that's folded, but it can't separate from the belt piece itself. Uh, so you can't actually have the Onkaku folded up with the disc animal inside of it to read the disc animals like you would in the show. Uh, so that is a little bit of a bummer, I think. That's probably about the only pose you can't do with this guy. Uh, so that that's a, just a minor, minor gripe. To change the heads on the Onkaku, you just pull. They do stick quite a bit, uh, so kind of work with it a little bit. And then you just take the new ones and kind of wiggle them in. Be really careful because the joint on there is very, very, very small. So you, there is a pretty decent chance that you might um, bend or break that joint. But once you have that situated, the fire effect on here is really, really cool. So if you're a fan of effect parts and posing your figures in action poses, uh, this is about as good as you get with this guy. It's really, really cool at the end of the day. And, of course, you just pop that off and pop this one back on. And then try to figure out how it's supposed to be lined up. Because I forgot. And, of course, you do get both fire parts for dual fire drumage. So, at the end of the day, this is a fantastic figure and a must-own for all Hibiki fans. There's been a lot of Hibiki figures, but this is definitely the definitive one. Even when I stopped collecting figure arts, I knew I was going to have to pick this one up, and then Bandai heard me and was like, oh, we'll buy this one, and then announced it like a couple months after. <laughs> but I, I love it so much. To not only have my favorite rider finally released, but released as a Shinkocho Seho, is is just really cool. I never got a chance to really mess around with the Kabuto version of the Shinkocho Seho release. Uh, and to, to finally own one is really great. There isn't a whole lot of difference between uh, a Shinkocho Seho and a normal figure art, but it's apparently enough for Bandai to give them pretty boxes and a nice hefty upcharge. <laughs> but uh, I still really dig it. Um, if it was released as a normal one, I would still love it. Um, but uh, they really did knock it out of the park with this one. The accessory count is great. The paint uh, detailing is phenomenal. The build of the figure is just a very high quality. And outside of uh, some paint splotches, um, I've heard some reports of, it's it's been a pretty uh, high quality figure in terms of QC issues. So... Huge props to them on that. I uh, really dig it. It turned out great. And like I said, a must own for Hibiki fans or anyone looking to complete a complete uh, main rider display uh, is also great for that. So overall, a great figure with very little flaws that I highly recommend to all fans of the character. So thanks for watching. Take care and have a great one. Bye.